This is Restoration Bible Church and Ministries. We are a people of excellence living purposefully. And now, here is God's servant, Reverend Tina Balanta, as she brings you God's word. We trust that you will be blessed as you listen. Hallelujah. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers in the house. Okay, happy Mother's Day to all the sisters in the house. Amen? Hallelujah. It's the day the Lord has made. That's why we have all the gorgeous women ministering this morning. It's of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Hallelujah. This morning I'm going to be sharing briefly about the mother heart of God. Hallelujah. We're always talking about, about the father heart of God. But I realize that God is not male, he's not female. God is God. He's not a man, he's not a woman. Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. Let's open our Bibles. We'll start from there. Because every time we always say, Our Father who art in heaven, so everybody thinks God is a man. But when the Bible says that God made man in his image, it didn't say he made him a man. It just said, In his image and in his likeness made he him male and female. Made he them. Genesis 1, 26, 27. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air, over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. So there's an aspect of God's nature and character that is feminine. There's a part of God that is feminine. God is not a woman. Okay? It's not a... In the spirit realm, there's neither male nor female. A spirit is just a spirit. It's the bodies that have gender differences. And God did that for, for the sake of order. But there is a difference in the spirit realm. God is God. He is a spirit, and they that worship him, the Bible says, we worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, what's the difference between men and women generally? I'll be, yeah, I'll do it, teaching back and forth. A man always wants to do things. Men like doing things. They like making things. They like making cars. They will create. They do things. You know, men want to form things. They want to initiate things. The men are the ones that are always uh, trying to bring out new ideas, new things. That's one thing about the men. While women want to be known emotionally, women are about relationships. Men are about things. How do I know that? Anytime there's a men's fellowship, they are talking about how to make money. <laughs> Whenever there's a women's fellowship, they are talking about the house. <laughs> they are talking about how to have a better relationship with the husband, how to have a better relationship with the children. Meanwhile, the men are talking about how to make more money so that they'll buy new houses, they'll buy cars, so that they'll have enough money to take care of the family round and round in a circle. So that's the difference between men and women. Men want to do while women want to be. There's a difference. Hallelujah. The woman wants communion. The woman wants connection. She wants relationship. She wants to know and to be known. That's why sometimes when you hear fighting between husband and wife, the main quarrel is that, oh God, you are not even listening to me. You are not talking to me. You are not hearing me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because most of the time, a guy is thinking of the next, uh, the next bill that you are presenting and how he's going to handle the bill. 
the heart of giving and receiving, the heart of action and relationship is present in God's nature, both of them. The man gives, the woman receives. The man acts, the woman is into relationships. Both parts are, you find both parts present in God's nature. And I, when I was making my, preparing for the service, I realized that there are a lot of scriptures that talk about that part of God. A lot more scriptures that talk about that part of God than we think about. We're going to start by looking at the mother heart of God being revealed in his desire for intimacy with us. The mother heart of God being revealed in his desire for intimacy with his children. We know the story of what happened in Genesis chapter 3 when um, Adam and Eve fell. The Bible says in verse 8 that after all that happened, they heard the voice of the Lord coming in the cool of the evening. They heard the voice of God walking in the garden in the cool of e e the evening. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Why, did they, why was it normal for them to hear God in the evening? Because there was a relationship, there was intimacy between God and Adam and Eve. Hallelujah. There was intimacy between God and Adam and Eve. Every evening, God will step down from his, his palace in heaven. He'll step into Eden. They'll sit down. They'll fellowship. Maybe they'll talk about the latest, the name Adam gave the latest animal. Maybe they'll talk about the, the plant Adam found. And he'll tell God, this is what I realize this plant does. These are the benefits of this plant. These are the things. There was a relationship between Adam and God, between Eve and God. Every day, God made time. Every day, God was there. They talked, they communed, they fellowshiped with one another. But when Adam fell, that was one of the first things that was affected. The moment he heard the voice of God, fear came. And he could no longer spend time with God as he was doing before. Fear came. And Adam, the Bible says himself and his wife, they went and hid themselves and they were like, Ugh. We have messed up. One thing about God is even when we mess up, he's still a faithful father. Even when we mess up, his hands are still open, ready to receive us. You remember the story of the prodigal son? Even when the son messed up, the father did not stop looking out for his son. Hallelujah. God loves you and he's always ready to receive you when you come into his presence. And he'll hold you into his arms in the name of Jesus. So lo God loves, longs for intimacy with his children on a daily basis. And intimacy involves being in touch with us on every aspect of our lives. The mother, for instance, is the one that knows what's going on in the house. She's the one that knows which child has an exam, which child does not have an exam. She's the one that knows which child is not feeling fine. She's the one that knows which two children are fighting in the house. Hallelujah. Because she is the one that spends time with them. There is a part of God that is longing for that kind of relationship with his people. And if we are willing to step into God's arms, God will make our concerns his own concerns in the name of Jesus. Because he longs to spend time with his children. It's not about re religion, but it's about relationship. It's about relationship. It's not a religion that we have with our Father God. But it's a relationship we have with him. That's why he always wants on a daily basis to be with us. Second Cor um, Corinthians 13, 14. We say that every service day. We say that every service day. But there's something that we don't see. Every service day we say the, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us now and forevermore. We, we always say that. But there's something I want us to see in the second, the letter part of it. The message translation says, the amazing grace of the master, Jesus Christ, the extravagant love of God. God is very extravagant. He loves you like no man's business. He cares about you. That's why he gave Jesus Christ his son for you. And because of that, you'll never be far from him in the name of Jesus. Then the intimate friendship 
of the Holy Spirit. The intimate friendship of the Holy Spirit. We don't have the scriptures up today. The intimate friendship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. So is the Holy Spirit, God longs to be intimate. God wants us to be intimate with the Holy Spirit. That's why he gave us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that is supposed to know us in and out. And how do I know that he knows you in and out? Anytime God gives a specific word, it's like he goes to your address, he hits you directly. Has it ever happened to you before? You are in church, you are praying, you are worshipping God. There's something on your heart that is bothering you seriously. And you are like, God, I want to hear from you. Then it's all of a sudden, it's as if somebody knocked at your pastor's uh, heart and said, this child of mine has an issue. And the moment pastor opens his mouth and talks, it's as if they just opened your life before him. Why is that? Because the Holy Spirit wants, he knows us intimately. God knows all about us. And God longs to spend time with us more than any other person. People in love, they are intimate with one another. They spend time talking. But God's ability to draw us to himself shows a desire for intimacy. That's why in Revelation 3.20 it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anybody hears my voice, if anybody hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and will sup with him. I will fellowship with him. Not that I will just eat food, because God is not interested in the food we're eating, the food we're talking about. But it says, I will spend time with him. I will fellowship with him. God longs for intimacy. Just like a mother longs for intimacy with her children. She has intimacy with her children. She has intimacy. She spends time with her children on a daily basis. God has loved us with an everlasting love. And that love will never fail where we are concerned in the name of Jesus. Jeremiah 31 verse 3. Jeremiah 1 verses 4 and 5. Jeremiah 31 3. Jeremiah 1 4 and 5. The Lord has appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, Jeremiah 1, 4, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. I knew thee. I knew who you were. I knew who you were going to be. I knew what you were going to be like. I knew what you were going to do. I knew what your life was going to be about. I was intimate with you. I knew you very well. And before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you and I ordained you a prophet unto the nations. So God's love, the mother heart of God is seen in the fact that he longs for intimacy. When I'm talking about intimacy, I'm just talking about close fellowship. Close fellowship, where you sit down and God whispers in your ears. Where you're wanting to go in a particular direction and God says, no, 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 that's not the right direction. As we learn to spend time with our Father, we'll develop that level of intimacy with him in the name of Jesus. The mother heart of God is seen in his compassionate and caring nature towards his children. His compassionate and caring nature towards his children. When a child falls down, a four-year, five-year-old child, even an eight-year-old child, when they fall down and they injure themselves, who is the first person they run to? They run to mommy. Mommy, I fell down. I injured my leg. Mommy, see blood is coming out. Meanwhile, daddy is in the house. Daddy might be standing next to mommy. <laughs> but the first person they run to is to mommy because mommy is the one that will say, hey, yeah, sweetheart, sorry. Let me blow it for you so that the pain will stop. Let me clean it for you so that blood will stop. There is that part of God in, there is that part of a mother heart in God. Which is why when we, fa when we fall and we're hurting, when things go wrong with us, we can always run to God. His arms are always open to us. God does not look at us when we're hurting and say, go and find somebody else to take care of you. He doesn't. He knows the things we are going through. Like that song says, he knows my name. He knows every thought. He knows everything that I'm going through. 
And his arms are always open to say, my child, come to me. My child, come. I'll strengthen you. I'll encourage you. I'll give you all you need to go through this situation. Hallelujah. God is always faithful to take care of his people. That part of God is always there. God is a compassionate father. Yes, it does not mean that uh, mommy does not shout um, sometimes. But it means that God does not shout. God doesn't shout at you, his child, because his love is everlasting. Amen? His arms are always open. Who does a hungry child run to? Mommy. Mommy, I'm hungry. Mommy, I want to eat bread. Mommy, you and Juno were eating, and Juno ate the meat, and he didn't give me meat. <laughs> The heart of compassion, the heart of a caring nature that we find in the mother, God also has that. And that's why God says that even uh, you find the birds of the field, they do not grow hungry. You find that even the, the lilies in the field, they are clothed more than Solomon was dressed in the days when Solomon was around. If God can do that for animals, if God can do that for plants, he will do more for you and I. He will never leave you. Because one thing with God is he cares about us. He has a compassionate heart. He has a compassionate heart. In Genesis chapter 3, after Adam and Eve sinned, what was the first thing God did? The Bible says God went and killed an animal and he clothed them, he covered them. He noticed that they were trying to cover themselves. His heart of compassion came up and said, this my people have messed up. Let me have mercy on them. He killed an animal, he covered them. He initiated the first blood covenant, but he did it out of compassion. When you go through the Gospels and you find Jesus reaching out to touch people to heal them, the Bible always says, we're going to look at a number of them, the Bible always says he was moved with compassion. He was moved with compassion. He was moved with compassion and that compassion propelled him to do something. A compassionate heart will propel a mother to feed her children while she herself doesn't eat for two, three days. It's happened to many women, especially when you start with a young home. When I say a young home, you start with, from a level where you don't have anything. When you have the children and they are hungry and you look at your pocket. In fact, I remember one woman, she said, uh, I can't remember how much she said she had in those days. In our days, 100 naira was plenty of money. <laughs> she had a little bit of money. The children were angry, um, hungry. For two days, the money she had, mommy, are you not eating? Ah, you eat first, I'll eat after you. For two, three days, she kept doing that until God intervened in that home and brought resources their way. That is the heart of a mother. But you find that where you are concerned, God's eyes are always open towards you and his heart is ever yearning to meet your every need. God will not see you go hungry in the name of Jesus. I've been young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaking nor his seed begging bread. Why is that? Because God, the heavenly father, who has the heart of a mother in him, makes sure that he meets your needs. Your needs will be met in the name of Jesus. Matthew 14, 14, the Bible says, Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion towards them and he healed their sick. A compassionate heart will always do something. A compassionate heart will always do something. Matthew 9, 36, but when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. He was moved with compassion. He was moved with compassion. Matthew 15, 32. Then Jesus called his disciples unto him and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they continue with me now three days. This was when he multiplied the, um, the bread and the fish. And having nothing to eat, 
and I will not send them away fasting lest they faint in the way. When I was reading this, I started laughing because the first thing that came to me is the average man will not remember that people around him are hungry. <laughs> I'm not insulting. I'm just saying the nature that God has put on our inside. It is the mother in the house that remembers that uh, somebody needs food to eat. The man in the house will think of uh, all the bills, share the bills are paid, but everything is settled. Fine. Uh, we're cool. We're cool. As long as the needs are met, everything is doing fine, Abby. Meanwhile, it's the mother that says, hey, but we haven't sent money home to Mama yet. Oh. We haven't remembered to visit this person in, in, that has a need. We haven't done this. But in this case, the Bible says Jesus was moved with compassion. I said, these people have been with me for the last two, three days. They have not eaten. If I send them away, they are going to fall before they get home. So what can we do to provide for them? Both the father heart and the mother heart. He needed to provide for them, but it was compassion that brought about that part of him. The Lord will meet your needs in the name of Jesus. Jesus moved with compassion. Mark 1.41. Mark 1, 41, Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him and said unto him, I will be thou clean. So many, many scriptures, Mark 5, 19, Mark 6, 34, so many scriptures that talk about the compassion of God. 1 John 3, 17, 1 Peter 3, 8. It's natural to respond in love because you are the seed of God. You have the seed of God on your inside. So the ability to love comes from God. The ability to come to be compassionate is something that God has on his inside. And that part of God is a part of God that does not allow him to see you suffer and turn his eyes away. That's the part of God that is always ever ready to hear our prayers and answer us. God will visit you in this season and will cause your pains to turn into rejoicing and laughter in the name of Jesus. Psalm 22 verse 9, the ability to see no fear in love comes from learning to trust. 1 John 4, 18 actually says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment. Then you now find that there is no fear in love because a child always learns to trust at the mother's breasts. A child learns to trust people from being held closely to the mother. During the time the mother is nursing, while the baby is sucking at the breast, the baby learns to trust. The baby learns to know that anytime I'm hungry, somebody is always there for me. Anytime I have a need. And in fact, for um, the younger nursing women, maybe three, four months, you realize that at the sound of your baby's voice, something starts happening in your body. At the sound of your baby's voice, the milk starts to flow. That's why God is called the all-breasted one, the El Shaddai. We've talked about the El Shaddai advantage the last few weeks. That's because that's why when a baby is hungry, the milk starts to flow. Do we understand what I'm talking about, sisters? The milk starts to flow. Even if you are in a party, you are in the office, if you didn't dress well. <laughs> why is that? Because there is something God has placed in you to nurture that child. That is a part of himself he has placed in you. Which is why God longs to nurture his children. And God longs to make sure that his children are well cared for. You will not lose out on what your father has prepared for you in the name of Jesus. But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Psalm 22 verse 9. But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. I was cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. You made me hope when I was on my mother's breast, when I was still sucking. You made me learn to trust. You made me learn to believe in people. So a child will always believe. That's why if you put a child here, the child will jump and not think that you will not catch him. Because right from when he was young, the fact that he will cry and mommy will answer him, naturally he just assumes that everybody loves him like mommy loves him. So it takes the evil in the world for a child to know that not everybody loves him like mommy loves him. God cares about you. God loves you. And God will see to it that your every need is met in the name of Jesus. God's thoughts towards you are precious. 
which is why his plans for you are plans of good and not for evil. The plans of God are plans that will give you a future and an expected end. So when the enemy comes against you, God who has a better plan for you will frustrate the plans of the enemy against you and your family in the name of Jesus. So don't fear the plans of the enemy. Don't fear what the enemy throws at you. Because God always is a step ahead. He's a step ahead. That's why it says his thoughts are precious. That's Psalm 139 verses 17 and 18. His thoughts towards you are precious. Psalm 71 verse 6. There are just so many scriptures. By thee have I beholden up. By thee have I been holden up from the womb. Thou art he that took me out of my mother's bowels. My praise shall be continually of thee. God caused you to be born. God gave you life. God gave you life. God gave you life. And that life is that you fulfill the destiny he has prepared for you. So you walk in what God has planned and prepared for you in the name of Jesus. The mother heart of God is seen in his covenant name. We're not going to go there. We've, talked, we've looked at that the last few weeks. Jehovah El Shaddai. His covenant name, Jehovah El Shaddai. Having more than enough to meet your needs. There's no need you'll take before God that God cannot meet. He has more than enough to meet your needs. So even if your needs are worth 10 billion God has more than the 10 billion. You will not lack when you stay close to God in the name of Jesus. Psalm 68 verse 5 says, God is a father of the fatherless and a judge of the widows. He sets the solitary in families. He brings out those which are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. God sets the solitary in families. You have never been alone and you will never be alone. Because your father is always with you. And he has the heart of a mother where you are concerned. A compassionate heart. A heart that nurtures. A heart that provides. And a heart that ev meets your every need. That's the heart of a father in... That, the heart of a mother in the father God. And that heart will never leave you alone in the name of Jesus. Psalm 27 sa 10 says, When my father and mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. So even if natural people forsake you, God will never forsake you. God will never abandon you. He'll never leave you alone. And that's why I know for certain that nobody is ever a mistake. Even if you want to tell me that your parents planned to have two children and they now have five of them, the remaining three are not mistakes. <laughs> the remaining three are part of God's plan for the house. And the remaining three will bring joy and rejoicing into that family in the name of Jesus. Nobody is a mistake because God plans very well. God plans. The Holy Spirit will teach us all things. How? Through the communion we have with him. Through the fellowship we have with him. The communion, when we're talking about communion, we're not talking about breaking of bread. But we're talking about fellowship. Fellowship with the Father. Fellowship with the Holy Spirit. It's in that time of fellowship that we learn a lot from the Holy Spirit. That's when we learn from, uh, from God, where we are spending time in his presence. Just like it's a time of fellowship with the mother that all the gossip the mother has, she will pour it to, to the child. They are sitting in front of the yard looking at everybody passing, mommy and children. That's when mommy will describe this person, mommy will talk this person, mommy will gist about this person. Because that is the time of communion. That is the time of fellowship. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that is with us on a daily basis and fellowships with us. And as we learn to fellowship with him, we will have the answers to all our needs in the name of Jesus. When children run to see, when they see mommy or yo-yo and daddy or yo-yo, who is he, whose bags are they going to carry? Because it's mommy's bag that always has something inside whether it is one sweet or not, there will sure be something inside mommy's bag. <laughs> Time spent learning about life is in the mother's presence most of the time. Time spent learning about different parts of life, different things, you find it in the mother's presence. 
And you, that's why you find that the Holy Spirit is always longing to be with us. Always longing to be with us. Isaiah 66 verses 11 and 12. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 and 4. John 14, 16 to 18. God is a comforter. He comforts us through the person of the Holy Spirit. John 16, you, her children, will drink the milk of her prosperity and nurse with delight from her glorious abundance. I'm reading the Passion Translation. Isaiah 66, verses 11 and 12. I'm reading the Passion Translation. You, her children, will drink the milk of her prosperity and nurse with delight from her glorious abundance. For Yahweh says, I will extend to her prosperity like a river and the wealth of Gentiles like a flooding river. You will nurse from her breasts, be cradled in her arms, and delightfully bounced on her knees. As a mother tenderly comforts her children, so will I tenderly comfort you, and you'll find comfort in Jerusalem. God says he will extend to her prosperity like a river, just like a mother comforts her child, that's how the Lord will comfort you. That's how the Lord will encourage you. That's how the Lord will cause you to nurse from his breast. And you will not lack for any good thing in the name of Jesus. John 14, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another comforter. That's the amplified version. Counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and standby that he may remain with you forever, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Welcome or take to its heart because it does not see him or know and recognize him. But you know and recognize him for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will not leave you comfortless, desolate, bereaved, forlorn or helpless. I will come back to you. And then John 16, 13 to 15 says, But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of his own, but he will tell you whatever he hears from the Father. He will announce and declare to you the things that are to come. God will declare, the Holy Spirit will declare to you what he hears from your Father. So nothing will take you as a surprise. There is nothing the Father will do that will take you as a surprise because the Holy Spirit will give you secret expo in the name of Jesus. He always gives you advance notice if you learn to be close to him. He doesn't allow anything to surprise you. So God is always there for us as a mother in our lives, in the person of the Holy Spirit. And as we develop a close relationship with the Holy Spirit, we'll walk in the path that he has prepared for us in the name of Jesus. Isaiah 49, the love of a mother speaks of nurturing, empathy, affection, and tenderness. You'll find that in Isaiah 49, verses 15 and 16, and then Psalm 131, verse 2. Can a woman forget her suckling child, that she shall not have compassion on the son of her womb? The answer to that is no. It says, yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. A mother might forget. The only reason a mother will forget is maybe she's very tired. Because no matter how it is, a woman will always remember that she has a baby at home. And God says she might forget, but he will never forget you. He'll never forsake you. There is nothing your need is that your father will turn his back against you and say, I don't know you, I don't know where you're coming from. That is not possible. Because God cares about you. So whatever the concerns are that you have, always remember that you can run to the knees of daddy God as a mother. And as you run to him, God will meet your every needs. God will strengthen you and he'll perfect all that concerns you in the name of Jesus. He says, behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hand. Your walls are continually before me, continually in my presence. Every time I look at you, every time I move around, there is something of it in my presence that reminds me of you. Your walls are continually before me. 
Your walls are always before me. God cannot forget you. God cannot forget the prayer requests you made. Even if the answers have not shown up, it does not mean he has forgotten you. It does not mean he does not care about you. All it means that God is working on your matter and at the right time you will receive the answers to your requests in the name of Jesus. God is not a man that he should forget. He's not a woman that will say, I have things to do. Uh, uh, senior, take care of junior. Let me go and do. Mm -mm, God doesn't do that. God doesn't do that. God is always there for his people. He's always there for his children. And as long as we learn to believe in his promises, we learn to trust his word, God will cause everything about us to be made perfect in the name of Jesus. Surely I have behaved and quietened myself as a child that is wind of his mother. My soul is even as a wind child. My soul is we is wind is e even as a wind child. Where you are concerned as a child of God, God, you never grow too old to go into God's presence. As we are all sitting now, if I see any of you sitting on your mother's lap now, we we'll look for trouble. Say, are you okay? If we see any of you holding feeding bottle with your mom, we'll say, are you okay? But with God, God says, mm -mm, anytime you can come before me. Anytime, come into my presence. Come and I'll feed you. Come, I'll nurture you. Come, I'll meet your needs. Come, I'll open doors for you. Come, I'll beat the enemies on your behalf. And as you do that, as we learn to trust God, trust in his faithfulness, we'll find that the peace of God will surround our hearts and our minds in the name of Jesus. God is a faithful father and his words that he has spoken concerning us, he'll never, they'll never drop to the ground empty in the name of Jesus. Let's rise to our feet this morning because God is faithful. We're going to appreciate him for his goodness. We're going to thank him for who he is. The love of a mother is there in the heart of God in the way he's compassionate towards us. When your tears are falling, God sees your tears. God hears your cries. God answers you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your mercies. We thank you, Lord, for your compassionate nature towards us. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you, Father, for who you are. We belong to you, Father. We are your children. And we know that you've loved us with an everlasting love. Father, we come before you this morning thanking you for your love towards us. Father, we thank you that because of your compassion, you'll meet the needs of your people on a daily basis in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that in spite of what's going on, your compassion will cause everything in your heart to be poured out on our behalf in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for visiting your people in this time. Thank you, Father, for opening doors. Thank you for being there. And I thank you, Lord, that as we learn to keep our eyes focused on you, you who have promised never to leave nor forsake us, will visit us in our own time of need and cause laughter to abound in our hearts and in our mouths in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for turning things around in our land. Father, we bless you. We appreciate you. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Thank you for listening to today's message. Do join us same time next week. Follow us on our social media handles, Facebook and Instagram at Restoration Ministries International, Twitter and Mixilar at RBCM Online, and our website is www.rbcmonline.org. You can also be part of our live power park services every Wednesday by 5.30 p.m. and on Sunday by 7 a.m. and 8.30 a.m. respectively at Restoration International Conference Center, RICC, Romanew Extension, Kaduna South. God bless you.